So um, the next vitromacular um, interface disorder is the vitromacular traction syndrome. And um, I think you are all acquainted with the new classification, the International Vitromacular Traction Study Group classification of vitromacular adhesion and traction. And uh, without going into details, because you have the text and the, 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 the paper in the journal and you can go back to it, but um, we have to differentiate between vitromacular adhesion and vitromacular traction. Vitromacular adhesion means that the vitreous is still attached to the um, macular area and there is an acute angle between the posterior hyaloid and the, um, the macular area. But there is no traction and the outer retina, outer retina layers is, um, is healthy. And if we speak about traction, this means that this adhesion starts to contract and changes inside the retinal tissue started to appear in, um, in the form of um, cyst, uh, pseudocyst, um, elevation of the fovea, and maybe changes in the outer retina. Uh, the vitromacular traction syndrome may be um, isolated, that is, um, not associated with systemic disease, or it may occur um, in association with uh, systemic uh, other diseases, the so-called concurrent um, vitromacular traction, and this may occur with a AMD, um, branch vein occlusion, and uh, diabetic retinopathy. And the vitromacular traction, uh, the same. So if we would like to classify this vitromacular traction, so it is severe. Why it is severe? Because it resulted in a splitting of the retinal layer, the formation of um, a pseudo or lamellar macular hole, and there are changes in the <coughs> outer retina. So if we look into the video of the um, OCT, we found this, what is shown in the OCT, and if we look into the other eye, the other eye um, had a full thickness macular hole that was unsuccessfully operated with persistence of the macular hole. So if we look into the video of this uh, case, <clears throat> the posterior hyaloid is attached and you have to pay attention to peel the posterior hyaloid. And please notice, look at the fovea and how it behaves when you approach. It, it looks um, like it collapsed because it is under traction and you have to go around the macular area um, in order to circumcise the um, attachment of the vitreous. And the next step is to remove the internal limiting membrane. This is um, a technique that may like or you may dislike, but it is based on the use of the tannus scraper. And um, the best way is to start just central to the, um, to the vessel, because as I said, the attachment here is a weak attachment and there is no ILM over the retinal vessel and then the internal limiting membrane uh, it's a way of starting the peeling if you are not accustomed with the pinching technique or you are starting to um, do ILM uh, peeling. So this is the pre-operative, this is the post-operative, and um, this is the foveal lucency that was discussed yesterday. And um, it may take some time, but it usually um, uh, resolve and uh, the visual acuity uh, improved. This is again a severe focal isolated vitromacular traction syndrome resulting in foveal elevation. The fovea is elevated and there are foveal cystoid spaces. Look at the uh, video. Again, you have to um, peel the posterior hyaloid and you have to circumcise this elevation. So if you um, have to elevate the posterior hyaloid between the optic disc and the macular area without creating any traction on the uh, macula so as not to create a macular hole. And you see that the posterior hyaloid is gradually elevated. 
And every now and then you circumcise, you cut this adhesion in order to um, decrease the traction on the macular area until the macular area is uh, passed and um, the, you continue peeling the posterior hyaloid um, safely um, after passing the macular area. This may be done uh, slowly, patiently, and giving it a sufficient time in order um, to um, not to create uh, an iatrogenic uh, macular hole. And then after passing the macular area, you start peeling the rest of the uh, posterior hyaloid, which is, which is an easy uh, task after that. You see that the posterior hyaloid here is thick, is adherent to the rest of the retina, and um, you have to um, peel the posterior hyaloid, and then you inject trimsnilone. I do not like to inject trimsnilone before that, because if you inject trimsnilone to peel the posterior hyaloid in these cases, you may mask the behavior of the underlying retina, and you may in, uh, um, create a, a macular hole um, while you are not seeing the behavior of the underlying retina. Again, the internal limiting membrane is elevated, and this is the pre- and the post-operative pictures. The, um, the configuration of the macula is, um, is being restored to the normal, and the outer retina is healthy. Uh, this is the fellow eye of this patient. His, um, uh, the patient, the other, the other eye has an epimacular membrane, a lamellar hole, and um, uh, vitromacular traction. If you would like to classify this case so it is broad, it is not isolated, it is not focal, but it is broad, isolated, because there are no concurrent disease, severe vitromacular traction, and it resulted in retinal, again, retinal splitting, and the lamellar macular hole. If we magnify this area, you find that the, there is a lamellar hole described, as described by Jersey, and there is an epimacular membrane, and this is the area of the attachment of the posterior hyaloid to the posterior pole. So if you look into the video, it is, you can see that the sheen of the adherent posterior hyaloid, and it is an abnormal vitreous, and um, um, you have to peel it, maybe using uh, forceps. You can notice the attachment at the, um, at the vessel. And this should be done um, slowly and cautiously again in order not to create um, a macular hole or to increase the size of the hole. And the, the traction or the peeling is tangential to the surface of the retina because um, if you pull it like this, definitely you will create a macular hole. So the posterior hyaloid, all the epimacular membrane and the posterior hyaloid um, uh, were removed. And then the stain and then peeling the internal limiting uh, membrane um, again in order to um, eliminate all sources of traction. This is the pre and the post operative pictures and there are some RPE changes. And this is the fellow eye of the, of the previous patient. Um, this is broad, isolated, severe vitromacular traction. There is diffuse retinal edema and foveal detachment. And look at the video. Again, the posterior hyaloid is peeled. And you will see that the posterior hyaloid is strongly adherent to the center of the macular area. So this is the sheen uh, or the reflection of posterior hyaloid peeling. And I tried to avoid creating traction over this strong adhesion to the center of the fovea by, again, circumcising. You see that the, it is strongly adherent to the fovea. So you have to cut it in order to um, isolate this area of traction. 
you elevate cautiously, and once the probe can be introduced, you cut um, around. You will go, go from the, to the peripheral part to the central part to elevate the posterior hyaloid. but always putting an eye on the attachment until it is um, completely circumcised from the area of um, a strong traction. This is the last part, and then it is, um, now you can peel the posterior hyaloid Oh, this is again an epimacular membrane or a thick part of the posterior hyaloid that has to be removed and to complete the circumcision. Now the circumcision is completed and the posterior hyaloid can be uh, peeled safely and this is followed by ILM peeling. This is again focal isolated severe vitromacular traction syndrome resulting in retinal splitting, cystoid spaces, and a lamellar macular hole. And this is an interesting case. Again, there is attachment at the vessel and attachment in the paramacular area and on the nasal side also. So it is a broad um, attachment. Okay. So um, my presentation, this presentation, I will uh, conclude the presentation, and um, the aim is to avoid creating much traction on the macula, to avoid creating a, um, um, a macular holes or increase the lamellar macular holes. Thank you for your attention.